All right, well, that seems to be better. All right, we should be good to go. Okay, do I need to bring everyone up, anyone up to host? Nope. All right. <clears throat> yeah, whatever you got. So we have a Lorraine book uh, out. Is your Zoom muted or is your? Oh, I was muted, yeah. Yeah. So, Lorraine, you need to know uh, your last name. Lorraine, a lot of time. All right. Okay. Oh, okay, I am unmuted. Yep, you are unmuted. Lorraine? Yes. Would you please identify yourself? I'm sorry, say again. Would you uh, would you please tell us your last name? Uh, Nichols, Lorraine Nichols. I'm the treasurer of the Heartland Winter Trails. Thank you, Lorraine. Thank you. Okay, welcome everyone. I'd like to begin uh, this one for me second. Small comment that I would have is that this present in person we identify some of the folks as members of the planning commission and some other planning commission members. Okay. 
Any other comments? I have a motion to accept the rules. I have a motion to accept the rules. Oh, okay. All in favor of the So, 
that's one. You know, apple juice really is all about the apple juice. I know about the apple juice for those, I guess it's my daughter got like that. Yeah. Uh, in highway crew tends to like to avoid it just to keep moving in the moment. Yeah, that's another answer. Yes. What else does Bill from the Union's Lee Run? Not quite from Staples? Yeah, we moved to the Union's local company. They're taking care of the lack of the next Staples Lee Run. The library is still using Staples. I think she does. But she's talking to you. Additional question for when I get a motion we can accept our invoices up to November 2nd. We'll make a motion to accept the invoices up to November 2nd. I'll second it. All in favor of accepting the invoices up to May 2nd for the time. All right. Uh, any names? Um, are there any adjustments to the agenda? Not to tonight's agenda, but just for future agenda items. I think we still need to track the Mill Street from the Barnesville Bridge and Carbonville to do the Hog Fish businesses. Yes. So maybe we should get those officially out to the future agenda items. We are, we are, you want to read the book coming up on the building. No, if Dave would address any updates, we can do that. Other than we're looking to look at some uh, work that we're looking to do, uh, we kind of take this forward to work with us on that. Any other suggested addresses? Are there any public comments? We're ready to do in a moment. You. Okay. Okay, this one is missing us. Oh, I see some hands up. Um, John Bruno and uh, Helen Edmund. Perhaps have a comment. Uh, yes, a couple of things. Is there is is there a way of improving the sound? I'm having a terrible time uh, with the sound coming here. Whether it can be turned up, it seems to be very choppy and difficult to hear. Oh, oh, give me one second. So if I turn up my volume, I can hear. But it's not coming through the owls, too. All right. How about now? Can you hear something back? It's sort of garbled, too. I don't know whether the speakers are too far away or what. John, how about if we just kind of talk? And can you hear us now? That, that's better. All right, perfect. Um, is this uh, the public comment period uh, time? Yes, it is, John. Um, I have a question. I have a question regarding uh, the three corners intersection, or uh, with the, is that going to be discussed later? It's going to be covered during the manager's notes. Okay, I'll okay. wait till. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, can you uh, connect Helen, please? Yeah. <laughs> Hi, can you hear me? Uh, yes, sir. Hello, thank you. Good yeah, I have the same uh, comment that John did about the audio. It was very garbled, so I hope that it's going to be clearer now. It was hard to hear what any, 
I mean, you could tell someone was speaking, but I'm not really good at reading lips, so it was very hard. So thank you that you've corrected it. That's all. Great. Okay, um, I think we're ready for unless there are hands. Um, going on to new business. Um, uh, the Portland Winter Trails. Um, please, if you guys would come to the, to the table. Um, thanks, members of the select board, for having us here. I'm Andrea Ambrose, and I'm the volunteer director of Heartland Winter Trails. I'm here representing the other directors and members of Heartland Winter Trails to let you know that we recently applied for and were granted federal 501c3 status and are registered with the Vermont Secretary of State as a nonprofit corporation. It's been a really long journey to get where we are today. The first trail was established in the early 1970s by Heartland resident Henry Merritt. And this trail was improved and lengthened by Gary Tratcher and several other ski team mates from Hartford High School in the winter of 1973-74. On January 19, 2004, several landowners and trail enthusiasts attended a meeting with the Heartland town manager um, and selected to investigate a way to establish liability protection for our trail activities in town. After follow-up meetings in February and March, it was determined by the select board that these trails would be protected under the umbrella of the Heartland Recreation Department, and our budget would be independent from the town. Trail enthusiasts and landowners met on April 18, 2004, and adopted the name Heartland Winter Trails and a logo that was created by resident Gloria, Gloria Charney. Since becoming a part of the Recreation Department, our loose collaboration with volunteers continued to mature organizationally, as well as upgrading our trail grooming equipment and increasing the total trails available to everyone uh, of over 25 kilometers. Heartland Winter Trails would like to thank the select board and other town employees for their help and support through the years. We especially appreciate our collaboration with the town recreation department and the road crew who kept the parking area across from Three Corners Fire Station plowed during the winter months for so many years. And thanks for helping us to get where we are today. We plan to transition to operation on our own effective July 1st. And we ask that insurance coverage of our grooming equipment through the VLCT continue until the 1st of July, at which time we'll take over responsibility for this coverage. Additionally, we will need to transfer financial records and funds to our treasurer and our bank account. I hope it won't bring up the time. Okay, the title of, of ownership of our John Deere Gator will need to be assigned to Heartland Winter Trails uh, in Incorporated. And that's it. And uh, yeah, thank you very, very much for all of these years of assistance to get us safely to where we are today. Well, Andrew, you, in your opening comments, you said uh, just how much work it was for you to do the 501 c So um, congratulations on that. And I do hope that, that this will uh, enable Heartland Winter Trails to go on as a very successful part. Yeah, thank you very much. It, as many of you know, it's been a small group of folks who have kind of kept it going, but we're all getting older and we'd like to see you know, new folks joining the organization and we have had new, new folks and interest. And uh, I think in establishing some of these goals, it's made it, uh, a, you know, much more likely that Heartland Winter Trails will continue on, hopefully, mm -hmm. before beyond my ability to ski right. in this town. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sure you've discussed with Andrea the transition dates. So, uh, First, we've heard of it. So, yeah, we'll not work not with sure. Andrea and, and work through it. Okay. Well, they will be in touch. Thank you, Andrea. Yes, thank you. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to get in 
much. Very, very any comments? No, just uh, also again, thank you very much for uh, all the sort of administrative support and moral support through the years. And it's, uh, it's pretty surprising to look back and realize how long this has been going on, but we're looking forward to by becoming a more uh, cohesive independent group that we can solidify uh, the, the group and the effort well into the future. I think we have a milestone coming up here fairly soon where we can hopefully have some some fun activities to celebrate 50 years. It is yeah. hard to believe that it's been that long. Yeah, I agree. I have to get Beach Conger and turn the back down. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, any questions for Gary or Andrew? I just want to say thank you. The trails are lovely. Oh, so I have to be a there. Okay, going on to an update mm -hmm. and this contract discussion with the Vermont State Police. Great. So today I just ran some numbers and pulled a few things out of our database. So this isn't. Oh, sorry. I'm people don't know with the Vermont State Police. I'm currently the station station commander in Royalton, who covers the town department, and I manage the contract. So I just, I just need one for you guys. First. I know so we i'm able to get the billing as of the 31st of March. I can't do April's billing yet because we just ended and it takes a few days. So that's the total cost at this point um, for the contract hours. So it's about half of what your billing cycle. A lot of that has to do is with a reduced amount of hours because of COVID and things like that. Um, and also there's more younger troopers working the contract recently over the past six months to a year. So their pay rate is a lot lower than what that contract rate is. So when we do the initial contract, we have to put it to what the highest sergeants would make hourly on overtime. Um, so then, you know, the hours based on to where you get charged is based on the hour that the trooper makes. The actual individual work. Right. Okay. It's not <coughs> some entities will charge. This is the hourly rate every time for every hour. We don't do that. Ours fluctuates on depending on the hourly rate rate of the trooper. So you'll get that and then you get the tack on. I think it's 11 or $15 an hour that pays for gas and the cruiser and those type of things. That's what the state gets. The rest of that hourly rate goes to the trooper. So you only pay that. Are the hours that the troopers work, are they um, Are they built into the schedule as, or, or is it going to be just overtime? So it's, it's overtime. So, so you guys pay you for, for directed patrol in town. So while the trooper is on the town contract, <laughs> they're in town. It's not travel time. So if they live an hour away, that hour of travel is on them. It's when they step foot in town to when they leave town is the, when you're getting built. Um, so we eat any of that stuff. The other thing we generally don't charge for is follow-up. So if a trooper takes the call and there's a lot of follow-up, they'll do that the next time on their regular shift. Once in a while, things come up. Um, I just marked down that we did a large search warrant in town for some stolen property a couple, three months ago. Uh, and we did pull one of the troopers in for the contract during that, just so we needed that extra resource. So we helped out with the execution of that during the day. So I just, I, and I know that you maybe last year's report looks different. I probably do things different than my predecessor. This is kind of how I do a summary. And we're still not to the year end. So I don't have all the figures. Um, this stuff is fairly rough. 
So I look at it as you, since last July, you've had 348 shifts. So 348 times trooper has come to town and worked, whether it's an hour or six hours, where you wouldn't have had that necessarily person here physically. Uh, depends on their, their you know, how many hours they can work. Two or three of them live in town, so you'll see more smaller chunks. At the end of the day, they'll they'll hang out for an hour, you know, patrol roads. Whereas if you have more out of town troopers, you'll see more larger chunks of time for them to travel. Mm -hmm. um, so I just broke that down that way. Um, since then, we wrote a little under six thousand dollars in fines, made one hundred and ten traffic stops. That's traffic tickets and warnings. Um, 28 cases that the troopers took care of while they're in town. So if a case comes up, they're here, they physically take it. Whereas you could have a response from Bethel, Rochester, wherever we are. So that many times that there's been somebody here physically for cases. And I say like two or three of those incidents were crashes that involved some kind of DUI processing. So that's good that our response is a little quicker sometimes with those. Uh, and one arrest for excessive speed. I think that's, I think there's more than that, but I was just pulling out off our statistical sheets. Uh, sometimes it's exactly accurate to the data. Um, so recently, one of the troopers spoke at the elementary school. I don't know if that was a career day or what that was. Um, the search one we talked about, we had somebody here for the 4th of July parade last year. And also during that time when we were having a lot of the vehicle thefts and the burglaries, we were able to have some of the night shift guys at the end of their shift at two o'clock would stay for an extra hour just to make sure we were visible in town so that if somebody might be up walking around doing things they're not supposed to, they would see it. Um, just trying to help on that. Questions, comments? I gave David the newest contract. Here, I think it went up about a thousand dollars. Can I put it in the packet so they have it in front of them? So I think it went up about a thousand dollars because our rate increased a little bit. But again, generally, you're probably not going to see that on the back end. We can't, I can't tell you that it's not going to be the senior sergeant working the entire. That's, I just want to. I will say, probably at the beginning of the period, we were doing less hours. Whereas the last probably two or three months were more fulfilling the, the 60 hours a month than the contract is, is more looking for. We had people out on sick leave that generally just there's a very variation of different things going on. That's kind of an overview. Questions? But I'm just concerned that I can be arrested for excessive speed. 85 miles an hour, 50 mile an hour zone. Oh, so that's that's lower red notch on the split. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So usually you're gonna get a piece of paper that says you have to come to court. It's not necessarily so dragged back. Which right. is okay. Yeah, it doesn't say blue streak, so I think you're okay. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, luckily we don't have any of those. Mm -hmm. Tenor, a question that I'm often asked is um, someone's always speeding by someone's house and yes. How does your crew um, determine where to patrol? Um, so for speeding specifically. Yeah, so I take complaints. If people have speeding complaints, they can email me, they can call me. We have a tip line number. Um, so I'll direct some of that if I'm receiving calls of on just say Martinsville Road, like people go by every day at this time. Yeah. I'll let the people that generally work the contract know because they sign up for it at the beginning of the month for me so i know who's going to be working through the month mm -hmm. i'll shoot them an email hey when you're on concentrate some of your time in this area so i can do that okay. that's great and yeah. they should reach out to you yes if people have concerns about any of that kind of stuff if they want to report a crime they should just call dispatch but yeah. if they're looking for those type of things that they think yeah. that some of our time and uh, during the contract, we concentrated on. We'll take, we'll definitely take that. I will not give your number out. <laughs> they called the state police and asked for me. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and I think you said you're out of the royalty. Yes. Another general question, and you can defer and not answer this, but uh, 
I left this select board meeting um, this early winter. Uh, it was dark. Uh, and as I approached my turn off on a hard Hoochie Road, I saw lots of blue lights. Um, yep. And uh, there are actually uh, five troopers and vehicles there. Wow, that's on. And, and uh, I was told just to wait. And then I was told to go home. Um, yep. I, two questions. One, it was very hard to follow up and find out. And I suppose I shouldn't find out. It's a, I'm yeah. going something or other. Yeah, it's just a, uh, okay. And then the second is, is that just from a fiscal perspective, who pays for that? Is that is that a Heartland? So no, if, if it's an emergency response or a call, yeah, it's when we're on regular shift. Okay. So in that case, there would be no unless there was a Heartland a person working the Heartland time. Okay. So we don't charge for any any on other responses. Yeah. It's only when they're on the contract time. So it would be. Heartland is, is a little different because we will pull from Westminster and from the Worlds and Barracks. Because okay. this is the line. Yeah. Heartland is the last town for us. Oh, so. Okay. so you could find, you know, we had a bad crash just south on the interstate the other day. Mm -hmm. And I drove by off duty and I was like, wow, there's eight or 10. We don't ever have eight or 10 troopers yeah. in anything. Just but it just because there were some close yeah. from both areas. Okay. In the situation, there ended up being a lot of troopers <clears throat> for that. So. Um, a couple of falls ago, it must have been about four or five years now, we had a chance, a few members of the board and Dave, to um, meet with uh, the colonel. And he yep. was talking about pressures from the state legislature to cut back on, on exactly what our contract is. Yep. Um, what, 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 how do you see it going? Uh, you know, should we be worried about being able to renew a contract in another year or two years? Or do you have any insights there? I don't think so. We only, our barracks only has this one. So some barracks have multiple towns that ask. Uh, we do not take, we're not taking on new ones. So that's some of us would have occurred probably for the past four or five years. We, I would say four or five years ago, that's a guess we stopped taking on new town contracts. So we've had other people approach us. Um, this currently, Heartland is the only one in the world. To, so you go to different barracks, some barracks have four or five towns, some have one, it really just varies. But this is the only one for us. And we haven't had a problem. Like we do, some might not fill all the hours because it is voluntary. And if we're, if we're busier, just in general, troopers tend to not, you know, they're already, Pulling in a lot of overtime, just being, being called out and things like that. So it, 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 <coughs> I thought same meeting there was a, a, a prototype project that the state police were undertaking with a, one of the waterbirds. Waterbury, yeah. Uh, and I'm just wondering uh, how that turned out. It's still going. Okay. So we have two troopers specifically assigned to the town of Waterbury, mm -hmm. one night shift, one day shift. It's working right now, but our staffing is still questionable, yeah. reducing. I mean, that's every job in the state. Um, yeah. So I, I can't see us moving to that with other areas, not at this stage. I'm yeah. not seeing it unless we were able to get fully staffed. And yeah, the price tag is also a little bit steeper than what we thought. Yes, so. you're talking full time service for two shifts, a day shift yeah. and a night shift. So yeah. they're paying for all the extra things that this doesn't necessarily yeah. pay for. Um, any questions? I mean, do, do we have to take action on the contract? Uh, I think that you can. Um, I would just, not that you know, our, our budget for fiscal year 23 is pretty well set. It's maybe a little bit, a little bit higher than the 61308. It was kind of a guesstimate. Um, and the lieutenant's here, he can maybe even talk about whether there's any flexibility, but, um, you know, I don't think that we've discussed the hours that we contract in quite a while. So, you know, I guess my general question would be, you know, are we pretty happy with the 15? You know, I don't know if they can even offer more or we probably you know, couldn't offer, probably could not offer more. If you guys want to reduce, we can make that work. How, how far off the budget number is it? Exactly. We have probably 60. Was it says I thought it was only like 63 or somewhere near. It was a little bit of a guesstimate based upon. Yeah. It was actually. All right, so this is below the budget. 
Uh, if it is just a little bit. Oh, yeah, that's only it. what's used, but it's going to go far anyway. You may right. So it might become yeah. that number, but generally I would say just because of the hourly rate of the troopers that are working, it's probably going to be less right now. Right. So we're kind of out of below budget. We we've been contract. we've been trending below. Last year, the lieutenant kind of alluded to in the first part of this discussion that. Um, they've been trending low due to COVID and some other issues with, um, you know, some of the trooper staffing. So we've been, you know, maybe half to two thirds. Um, but it sounds as though they're going to be able to fulfill most of that going forward. Uh, I think he answered the question if there's no room to go more than 15 hours, right. um, you know, if you wanted to go less. But um, yeah, I don't. I think my personal opinion is that the town seems to think that you know we could use more, but um, so I wouldn't. I'm not sure if I would go less. Right. Yeah. And no more is not an option. So we uh, you look at promotion to approve. Uh, so we can actually um, approve this. Um, if you approve it, I can just go ahead and sign it and send it off to the lieutenant. Or um, and it still needs to go through our approval status. Yeah. So once the town approves it. I have to send it up through my chain of command. So there's a possibility they could not, but I, I don't foresee that. So if you want to go ahead and do that, we can um, we can finalize this right, yep, right now. Okay. Is everybody comfortable with the motion at this point? Or? I, yes, even for the contract base of that July 1st through. Okay, but uh, I'll make a motion to approve the Vermont Department of Public Safety contract for the state police coverage. Beginning July 1st, 2022, and ending June 30th, 2023. Is there a second? I'll second it. Thank you, Andy. All in favor of that motion, please say aye. All right. Aye. 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 Since we're at a meeting, I'll let you sign it and then we can. <laughs> You want to make a copy of it so we can give copyright to the person? Awesome. Will the town pay for new pens? What's that? So will the town pay for new pens? For new pen? Okay. It, it depends. I'll it's, bring one down to If it's one of those <coughs> election type pens, I'm not sure. I, <laughs> I guess I'm, not sure how, I'm not sure how long that will go before it kind of. I'll bring you back any pens you bought. They remind me of the uh, and the left hand side, uh, yeah. right there, you could print, you have print and then sign, I think. Uh, thank you. You're welcome. And the other thing I wanted to bring up, and I talked to you about that, just the Vermont Emergency Management is starting a program. It's called Survive Vermont. My barracks and the Dirty Barracks and a few other areas around the state are kind of piloting it this year. It's a, it's kind of a active threat medical and see something say something program. It's about a forty five minute to an hour and a half presentation. We we um, have the fire department do more medical things. We kind of try to get into a. The goal is to get into something that's already occurring in the town because it's only you know we have to pull people in generally. So we're trying to find events that the town might have, or the town wanted to have an event where I could come in with the fire department. I've been in discussions with the fire department and kind of give this presentation. So the state has been really good at teaching police officers, firefighters, and schools active threat situational awareness. And this is kind of the first time it's being pushed out to the public. In the fast, we have pushed it more to the private entities that teach that. So we're now offering it more of a public. And I thought Heartland would be one of the. I've been so, so so just a couple of towns. Town employees are open to town public. Public. I think we could open up if if you had an event coming up this summer or wanted to create something, and it can it can be gauged off age groups. So you know, children there wouldn't be a huge issue. You know, really small. So it's just something to consider. Like I said, I talked to David about it the other day, and I am in conversation with the fire department about this. So 
just something to put on your radar. Lieutenant, I see three targets for that education. And, uh, one um, is obviously the school and school age children, yep. um, the general public. Uh, if there's um, some sort of natural disaster that would trigger that emergency yep. or heaven forbid another type of emergency. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then the um, the aging population of Hawaii, uh, you know, where where especially if they had to move for a reason, how how do you sort of orchestrate that? Yeah, um, I'm familiar with. Um, I'm just asked to join a group at uh, Dartmouth Health. Health. I'm still trying to sort of say that as, as opposed to Dartmouth Hitchcock. Okay. Um, that is addressing um, uh, emergencies in rural areas and health in rural areas. Um, so it's an interesting, uh, I can talk to you at the end of the week and I'll let you know more about the program. So yeah. this is more orientation. But uh, I, I don't know how we would dovetail you in right now. How, how might we create what to, if we still had our Saturday morning breakfast, uh, community breakfast, that would be a, a lovely yeah. and, uh, topic. Yeah, I'm just kind of planting the seeds. So, I, yeah. you know. The town has some kind of a community barbecue or something like that, or yeah, come in for an hour of just discussion about how to keep themselves safe in situations, yeah. things that they can do to help their neighbor. You know, if, if we all talk about CPR, right? That's that's really somebody your farmer next door but he cuts himself badly. How do you try to mitigate that? It's very generalistic stuff and doesn't go in. You have to be a doctor to do the thing. So, mm -hmm. um, can you think of any ways to utilize the program? We have so many um, public actions here. I have a very good shoe on the way. Yeah. Thanks for allowing your time to work on it. Yeah. Just put the money in here. Okay. And again, we would just try to touch base with Brad yeah. if you want to. Yeah, I'd probably go through him and talk a little bit more about it. Yeah. I would partner with the Heartland Fire Department. So. Well, I'm excited. I think any programs in that area are, are useful. I'm just given this period where people were agitated in general. Yeah, there seems to have been an uptick in those things in the last few months. So, just to kind of piggyback on an email I sent back to you and John. So, Chief Sanders thought that, um, uh, you know, upstairs in like a town hall type setting would be ideal. Mm -hmm. um, I thought with the warm weather coming around, the numbers would continue to decline and, you know, we would kind of open back up to where we were going, um, you know, looking at June or so. Mm -hmm. They're on the increase at the moment, but, um, you know, it, it can stabilize. You know, I think that if we can look at those, if, if we don't do it outside, if it's a winter, if it's a indoor thing, see what the, you know, the warmer months bring. I think you said maybe, you know, you'd be willing to go as far out as, August or something. yeah, it, it's really not. There's no real timeline. They're just trying to get this pushed out a little bit this summer. So have you, have you done these already? So I gave them when I used to do this something different um, to some firefighter groups and things like that. Very similar, yeah. pretty much the same program. It was started in St. Albans, but we're a town of 3,400. We publicize this. What do we expect for? I really I don't know. We haven't pushed this to the public. It hasn't it hasn't been a it hasn't been something that's put pushed out to the public. This is kind of where we're trying to. Is it something that could be done outside, or do you need? I need to have some kind of electronic, some like a PowerPoint yeah. type. Yeah, okay. there is there is some of that. It's not a lot. So it would might but a little bit of to make sure people can hear and see. So um, what's the capacity upstairs versus the school auditorium? Or the library, if we were worried, maybe it would be a small number. So just something to think about if something comes up and you're like, oh, that might. And I'm and I'm also not opposed with if you had a elderly community <coughs> that wanted me to come in and just give a something brief to have that similar discussion. I'm, I'm totally in tune with that. It doesn't have to. The, the goal is to make it a larger community event, but I can come in and give smaller groups of. Um, you mentioned correspondence with Dave, but would Dave have a 
little synopsis of, of, that, of the program. So I'm trying to get a flyer or something. Like I said, we just had this meeting maybe two weeks ago to okay. try to jumpstart it. Because mm -hmm. Vermont Emergency Management is trying to kind of draw up some of this. So their goal is they're going to give any kind of advertising need be paid for that as a grant. Pens and things, drinks, things that would come there as material they would provide as part of that program as well. Teaching. So I can give you, like, I can send an email that give you kind of just the what it is. So essentially, it's see something, say something. Mm -hmm. We already kind of have an idea what that is from New York. They started that. And then it's run, hide, fight. It's another very general, it's an active threat kind of training. And then it's stop the bleed. So there are three programs that are already existing. They're not anything new. They're just trying to marry those together to give somebody just a from start to beginning things they can do to help themselves just view things in general, like how do I exit, to kind of react to when something's happening, to how to help yourself or somebody else if you end up being injured. So that's the that's the next one. All right. Your question was for Thank you. 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 Thank I think on the three page document the next is uh, that uh, Dave passed along from us. Uh, at our first organizational meeting, I, I really didn't know what we had for uh, rules of procedure. Uh, and I took it upon myself to sort of ask what some other towns were doing in the area. And then I also ran and pulled this. Model set of rules from the VLCT website. Uh, I, in looking through it, um, I thought the only thing that, that was potentially missing was um, that we would have the right to limit a discussion. I think, I think you and I talked about that, and I went back and thought it was in here, but I didn't see it. Well, it's excluded, specifically excluded in this one. Um, so, you know, when I look at Robert's Rules of Order, there are things in there that allow you to, you know, limit discussion on an issue or table an issue to another meeting or postpone to another meeting, I should yeah. say, or postpone indefinitely, which basically ends in discussion. And, you know, as I read through this, you know, I just thought about, you know, not specifically excluding one of those tools so that we can't use it. Uh, because I think there could be things on the horizon where we we may want to limit discussion, debate, right? Um, not necessarily with ourselves, but you know, to have the tool available if we need it, right? Yeah. Hopefully, we don't need it, right? I just would you know exclude it, and you know, kind of as part of that, you know, you may even have a, a line item here that says, you know. If, you know, if a, a situation arises for which these rules don't apply, we you know, default to Robert's rules of order. Yeah, which covers all these different cases. <clears throat> so you know, just don't give the tool away. Just keep it in your back pocket in case you need it. Yeah. And that was specifically, I think, number six. On um, so D six, I believe. Right. Uh, the public participation. No, C C six. You know, eliminates the motions to close or limit the date. So that's what caught my eye. So yeah, so I'd be tempted to strike the. You know, last sentence in C six. 
and then maybe add a C10 that says if um, if needed, we'll you know refer to Robert's rules of order to handle any other situations that come up. So Jim, I, I thought that that last sentence in C6 does address what you were saying. Unless I'm reading it incorrectly. I'm um, confused by what it is. It says motions to, well, I guess, okay, I guess the brackets, yeah, we, we have to decide will or will not. Exactly. Yeah. So I, I guess what I'm suggesting will be entertained if, yeah, if needed, we refer Robert's rules of order. Sometimes when you're discussing, it just ends up going round and round and round. Right. And then uh, doing the limit debate. Yeah. Which I, which I, again, I hope is a rare. Well, it's, it, it, it happened recently uh, uh, over a meeting about this uh, this past town meeting, should we have it or not? And there was a lot of uh, great discussion, but it started getting very, it started repeating itself, as Scott said. And, and, we can call for both here you you would care that I think we just yeah everything has been said so. yeah and I think we gave the last person who was about to speak the chance to speak and then we made it after that. Mm -hmm. I don't know if anybody else has comments they want to get before we go on to a second one. Well, so the second comment about public participation. Okay. Um, and my brain is telling me that if you were not a member, you know, if you were a member of the public, but you're not a Heartland resident, or you're not an official representative of a Heartland resident, then it should be up to the chair to decide who you recommends to speak. Uh, and kind of the reason this is in my head right now is just from some of the stuff that's going on in Woodstock related to Peace Field Farm. Uh, where we have you know non Woodstock residents trying to uh, kind of guide the decision with Woodstock. Uh, uh, so say that's not safe. So that's a very similar town meeting when we when we ask people who are non residents non living residents to identify themselves. I mean, it, it's certainly you know we can leave it to the chair to say you know. If there's value in the chair, if you recognize them, they're not to speak. Yeah. Um, so is that another item under F? Yeah, that, that there will be an additional item under F if, if you all think that that's a Um, so general thoughts before we go through and try to answer the will and will not and make the changes. Uh, any, thoughts any thoughts that you have in general before we go into the specific uh, uh, um, well, do and do not as well. Yeah. And that's on this public participation. You've got sometimes you bring in outside people, but I guess that would not be necessarily some just popping in in person. Yeah. Kevin Geiger comes and speaks in an official capacity. And just recently, we had Kevin Geiger and yeah. representing Two Rivers yeah. and others at the time um, as a resource specialist. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. So maybe it's your Heartland residents, and representatives of Heartland residents, and invited guests. Okay. Um, or allowed yeah. to speak, but non residents that don't fit that you know, definition need to get permission from the chair. Mm -hmm. so. and any general comments before we go into? No. Okay. No. Okay. No, except Jim, yeah. under you said you wanted to add something. Under public participation. Um, yeah. So, so my, <clears throat> excuse me, my suggestion that you know, if um, if the member of the public is not a Heartland resident, 
or a representative, official representative of our resident or an invited guest that they need permission from the chair to speak and then the chair can control uh, well, that. Well, let me write that down, pack it up, uh, yeah, right. just give it to me. So, uh, just kind of, so I just need to clarify when you say that the Robert's Rules of Order kicks in, otherwise um, it runs a, it's really doesn't paint to me, but at your <clears throat> organizational meeting, you vote on rules of procedure and you voted on consensus, which is different than you can also vote on Robert's Rules of Order and the board didn't do that. So I need to have some clarity between but that's for decision making, right? I mean, a lot of what we do in terms of managing the meeting falls within the Robert's Rules of Order, like making motions, a second of motions, of voting. I will let the board speak on that as to why Mary, you know, maybe historically the difference between, you know, historically they have not been all that, you know, formal as to they're going to follow Robert's rules of order for better or for worse. You know, I'm not going to say it's good or bad. Um, you know, it's been, again, a little bit more on consensus as to, you know, do we agree, do we not agree? You know, how do we want to proceed? So it, um, and that's all I'm. I'm going to put it out there that um, you guys need to kind of clarify that um, amongst yourselves a little bit as to sure. how that intertwines. And to stay with that, I I felt some vulnerability when we were um, wrestling with a couple of difficult topics where you know, what rules of order were we following, um, and and. Uh, so I wanted to be able to establish them and put them on the website as this is what we do. I'm, I'm not skilled at all. I have no background in Robert rules of order versus other rules of procedure versus uh, energy and just total spontaneity. Or the coin flip. Oh, today we are following this rule. And so uh, again, I just ask for thoughts or people at the table that have been around uh, official meetings, town government meetings, so longer than I have. Well, if we're going to uh, use Robert's rules of order, I would, uh, then we should all become experts at it, because otherwise we're always deferring to one or two people. So do we really want to go down that route? Okay. And uh, you know, we've never operated, I know things change, but to go from no written procedure to you know three or four pages, I, how many I mean we could we could get into so much detail here that we could spend entire meetings. Uh, so <coughs> let's just maybe go towards something simpler. Then more detail. Uh, Mary, one of the thoughts I had is uh, when I first came on the board, um, there was no orientation package. We would just show up and, and uh, mm -hmm. kind of listen and, and hopefully do the right thing. Um, I thought that this could be a, a step toward um, a new board member saying, This is how we operate. Yeah, I, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. It's just like, Let's just you know decide and not spend too much time yeah. on these procedures. Yeah. Uh, I, I think that's fair. And then if we operate on these procedures for a while, if we feel we need to amend them at another time. Yeah. I don't think that it would be wise to add anything about Robert's rules of order if we don't have them to say that you know I mean, yeah. for people to look at beforehand. If you don't have enough to read already, it's in a couple of sheet sheets. But again, you know, we yeah, you know, we don't necessarily need them. We have these policies. Yeah. Yeah. But my suggestion was just if these policies don't cover the situation at hand, right? Then you have something else to fall back on. It's there, right? Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so our, we should plan for that, but let's for right now in the interest of getting something done. Let's go through the document um, and answer any questions where we need to decide. I believe the first item would be item on page one, item five. <coughs> Other than adjournment right now, meeting adjournment, we do require a second. Um, and then we already we, we already did a second. Yeah, so that's, so that's, that's, just, that's a do. <laughs> uh, item six, uh, so ready to come up. <laughs> <laughs> So a member of this body or a member of the public process, it's this body. Body's used for both, isn't it? Yeah, I think I think this section applies to us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm fine. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so what are we saying? Only after or without? It should be after because otherwise you can have four of us talking at the same time. Okay. Um, and then motions to close or limit debate will be entertained. Well, I don't think so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, number nine. Uh, well, when you've got five people, you can't have two thirds. Yeah, so five yeah. same majority. Yeah. So you're really saying five, four, or three. Okay, majority sounds good. Um, uh, D one may already be done. Yes, it is. And two. How is D1 done? Um, the, the original text had um, those who wish to be added to the meeting agenda shall contact the chair, the manager, administrator, and. Um, okay, so there's no trace there. It's already been made. Yeah. 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 Um, anyway, I think I am two. Is already... Yeah, that's basically state statute on that one. Um, pretending to regular select board meetings versus uh, and where they're posted, posted at blanks and what's on the post office. Okay, then D3 is that unanimous two thirds majority. Should we just agree majority? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> E1, uh, Dave is taking the time to sort of put in the first and third Mondays and so on. Um, that was a choice we were looking for. And two is set. Then I think we're on to F2. Is that the next decision point? And we don't do a very good job of keeping to our minutes. Um, do we need this? F2. Yeah. My person, if I can just chime in, I think the department has always been fairly um, good about if someone has an opinion about a particular agenda item. Um, rarely have I, you know, once or twice I've seen, you know, not now is not a good time. Mm -hmm. um, for the most part, there's been, you know, the board has been pretty good at 
allowing discussion as to whether, you know, I don't know, actually, if I could read this wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sorry, I was thinking that it was for public comment. Yeah, minutes afforded for open public comment. Yeah, so it's, it's, uh, it's about each, each, so each agenda item. Um, you know, I think that, you know, I've always been, I've always warned it as, you know, you're here for town business. Um, it's your meeting, you know, you've made the motion, you discuss it, you know, and, and it's up to you to make the decision. Um, to allow public comment in with the select board for every agenda item um, is, um, is a lot. Um, I think that, you know, somewhere, whether it be before or after, you know, agenda items, if it's a hot button issue or if someone really has something to say, I think that Heartland has always been fairly good at allowing it. Mm -hmm. But I'm not sure I would make a rule to say, okay, after every agenda item, you make a motion and it's comment time. Mm -hmm. you whether you're then going to open it up to the, mm -hmm. you know, public, it kind of makes for, you know, you're here to do business and you're here to do business in front of the public to so, allow them so into like every discussion to make. Change here. So I think the change ought to be, you know, we have our public comment section at the beginning of each meeting. Right? We can have that. Um, you know, we're free to ask for public comments on any issue. It's when, you know, well, whatever. Item, item four, I think, allows the public upon being acknowledged by the chair to speak on the topic. I think that's the way we've kind of done it. I, I've seen that work in most towns. Um, you know, if the chair wants to let somebody speak, then that's fine. Okay, then perhaps two as it's written will be eliminated and maybe the new two will be the, 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 uh, so the public comments at the beginning of the agenda. The big agenda. Yeah, right. I don't know if we want to limit the number of minutes for that. Hey, I didn't understand what you were just saying. We're taking the current number two out. So right. we're <coughs> taking the whole thing. And, right. then what? and and this is the area where we we're going to uh, Jim is going to write up something for the resident. I'll, I'll do that as a, a separate so we could a separate number. Um, but in terms of replacing number two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say that we should recognize that we have public comments at the beginning of every agenda. As we, you know, as we did tonight. Um, yeah, so a simple statement that says at the beginning of every select board meeting, you know, the, I don't know what agenda item number it is. Um, three. Three. Yeah. Uh, after, after adjustments to agenda, we accept public comments. <laughs> For uh, you know, 10 minutes. You could just put that in as there's no way. Eric's trying to record this. So what, what, what is number two going to say now? I have it down as at the beginning of each meeting agenda, there is, or maybe I should say, there will be a special period. There will be a period for public comment. Typically, we've done it to for people, the public, to bring up things that aren't on the agenda. Right. Just right. not not to go into you know full blown well, paragraphs, but just a comment. Yeah. You know. um, yeah. Uh, well, that happened uh, at the last meeting when the lawyer for Sandy stood up during public comments and I don't think any of us knew where he was going until he was well into the and we sort of said well come, let's let's hold off and come back to that discussion. Okay. Uh, let's try. I believe I'm looking at my notes that's the last piece we need to do. Okay, how about on the number seven, order the constable to remove disorderly persons from the meeting? <laughs> you know, like, you know, have one here. So Randy or Mary can uh, take the people out. Okay. 
So, and I would uh, argue to or uh, remove that statement. Thank you, John. Remove your hand. Uh, I'm talking about 7D and uh, oh, I thought I couldn't do that. So the rate during the public comment discussion, we have a, we have a public comment. Uh, uh, the chair recognizes Stacy. Good evening. Can you guys hear me? Mm -hmm. okay. Yes, this is Stacy Bradley. Um, just something you guys might want to think about for clarity when you're talking about Heartland residents. During town meeting, it is registered voters that can only speak during town meeting, and those that are not registered voters must request permission to speak during town meeting. So to make that difference, and as far as residents go, you have property owners who own property but do not live here. So you need to think about what you consider a resident and how you're going to define that, I would think. I, you know, my mind would think that. I shouldn't tell you what to do, but you know, that those thoughts went through my head when you were discussing that. Um, what do you mean by a Vermont resident or a Heartland resident? Um, and does that exclude those that own property but don't live here full time? And I guess that's all I have to say on that. And that's what the place that I think that is a good point. My, my gut feeling is I wouldn't, you know, limit public comments to voters. Any right. resident should be entitled right. to property comment. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess well, property right. owners. You can be a resident, property you don't property have property. own property, you don't have to be a registered voter, right. but you can still be a resident right. as far as the state and federal government. You know, you can win right. when you find your taxes, you have a resident house. <laughs> but you're not compulsory to register to vote. So I guess the only question would be non-resident property owners. How about just members of the public? Um, but the, the thing I'm trying to be cautious of is folks from other towns with an axe to grind to kind of grind it here. Well, okay, but. So that's why I said so those folks, yeah, those folks should be, oh, yeah. Yeah. but those folks should have to be recognized by the chair. Yeah. Right this okay. Um, so what, why don't I do this? Why don't I? Why don't I take a stab at that? Which is what we talked about before. I'll try to draft the language. We can approve it or not, or modify it. Yeah. Well, I, I I would like to approve it tonight, but we also I think we should have a clean document with the decisions we just made very quickly about the majority or not, mm -hmm. um, and and hopefully at the next meeting it's just a matter of right. we, we would have read it and if there's no comments it's just a quick approval. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then. Um, So I don't need any motions at this point. We just will uh, bring this up at the next meeting. Dave, any thoughts on this? Uh, I guess the only thing I'm a little unclear about, take a look at Mary's minutes, is just the final wording on F4, or what was to become F2. Um, at the beginning of each agenda, there'd be a public comment period, but I'm not sure. If, um, as far as giving you a clean copy, uh, well, uh, I, I think that's where you were going with that. Yes. Um, what would become F2? Yeah, Mary, you have come. Yeah, I just read that. Yeah. But you don't like that? No, I just want to make sure so that we can turn around and get a clean copy for next meeting. I just want to ensure that somebody got it. So that at, I, can put that in. I just read that. At the beginning of each meeting agenda, a meeting's agenda, there will be a period for public comment. Okay. 
And then in addition, uh, Jim is coming to get some language for the Right, right. Yeah, I think that does make a good point. It kind of overlaps number four and number two. So I'll take a, I'll take a stab at it and get it to the guys tomorrow. Is that what you're saying? I just want to make sure that we don't have the same conversation we're having now next meeting. So I just want to make sure we're all clear on it. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and uh, so the, can you do me a favor? Can you just send me a ethical? Copy this. Uh, yeah. uh, I can. Okay, cool. Thanks. I think I made it. What did I send you? PDF or well. <coughs> uh, I think I pulled it off of the LCT as an edible. That's how, how, sure. how I was able to put in all the meetings okay. and stuff like that. Okay. okay. Uh, moving on. Um, totally different topic, trading bids. So I sent out to you Saturday. <laughs> sent out to you two bids, um, one from Pike and one from um, Blacktop. Uh, they are for um, Clay Hill, uh, Blacktop, uh, only has so Clay Hill Road. Um, hope everybody's familiar with it. Has dirt road uh, in the middle. Uh, payment on the two ends. Um, the payment towards Route Five is kind of the longer segment, uh, and then we have a payment uh, section towards Kichi Road. Uh, so um, on the Pike Industries uh, <laughs> estimate. Section two is the section from the dirt road to Quichi Road or Quichi Road to the dirt road. Um, Blacktop uh, on this particular bid that I sent to you, it is only that section. So no need to be confused on the Blacktop. But, but section two in Pike equals Blacktop. Yep. Very cool projects. Yep. So there's a couple of things to be discussed here. Um, one, um, the amount and, you know, what we budget for paving and the desire to do this in two years and not necessarily three years. Uh, we, right now we're running $200,000 per, um, per budget amount for paving. Uh, as you know, that this adds up to, you know, essentially if we were to do you know, just looking at pipe that has section one and section two, it's about 655,000. So it's um, 250 to, you know, depending on what happens next year, $300,000 um, more than what we have allotted for for the next couple of years. You know, the uh, if we were to try and chop this up into three years, you get into kind of funky, you know, you're gonna get uh, almost to the paved section. Uh, from Queechee Road, you're going to have kind of a small section and you kind of got to go up and over. And then you wouldn't have the full section to Route 5. You would have like a, <coughs> you know, you get like a little less than two thirds of the way there. And then you'd have to go the rest of the way. So there's a strong desire to do this uh, at a minimum in two years um, Queechee Road section and then the Route 5 section. Uh, so that immediately is, you know, more than. So, uh, so you have one hundred seventy thousand uh, current year budget plus another chunk that's available in July. The one hundred seventy thousand is being done as we speak. Okay, so that's gone. So that's done. It's actually I won't get into it, but um, it'll be more than one hundred seventy. But we have a grant. It's going to make the budget confusing, but. Long story short, the 170 is, is as we speak. So fiscal year 23, we have 200,000. But isn't there a highway surplus? You're, you're getting ahead of me here. Okay. okay. So yes. So so we want to try and do this in two years. There is a $450,000 surplus that I've spoken of before. Um, pertaining to the three corners intersection project. Okay. So 
that 450,000 or 400,000 worth of surplus in the highway department was, um, you know, kind of hanging around uh, in case of any overages in the three corners intersection project. So if we take 250 to 300,000 of that, you know, it brings you down to 200 to 150,000 of a surplus, which means that your cushion for the three corners intersection project is now, you know, less than ideal. Um, you know, prior to the inflationary measures that we're seeing today, um, you know, $450,000 was, you know, heck, that's pretty kind of good truck. You know, we should feel pretty comfortable about that. Today, I don't feel as comfortable about that. Uh, however, if we pull the surplus for this, and I've been kind of talking about this now for a couple of meetings, um, you know, you need, you know, we would be best served with a cushion for the three corners intersection project, yeah. which then in turn brings us to the ARPA money. So, you know, my recommendation would be, sure, let's go with the surplus and pull from the surplus because we're here now and we know that. Um, and we don't know what January will bring. You know, we could be $5,000, $500,000 over again, or we could be 150,000 over. We don't know. <laughs> However, what I am getting to is you would be best served if we are going to take the surplus money that you take more than a mental note of perhaps the need to backfill the surplus with ARPA money to offset an overage in the three quarters intersection of project. It's like a, like a follow, yeah. Uh, so, so my thought is ARPA money is not, I mean, it's spendable. I don't think we should be talking about spending it now. The committee's still kind of working on that, doing what they're doing. The three corners project, we get the one bid on, it's 50% over budget, right? In January, it might be less than 50% over budget if we get multiple bids. It might be double budget, right? In which case the surplus doesn't help because we're still short. So my simple brain says, do the projects you can do now, get them done and worry about three corners later. So I don't think you can dismiss. So for instance, that bird has used ARPA for months season. But, but I, wouldn't, I wouldn't dismiss anything so, about ARPA. I just don't think I'm just I'm comfortable spending the money now on free cars. Right? No, or, on or Clay assuming, Hill. Or assuming we spend money. So on Clay, on Clay Hill, using the surplus money on Clay Hill, I'm still going to say, you know, I don't think you can dismiss outright unless you want to dismiss the project. And I think that that's a big question that's going to come up. So you're saying days. that when the ARPA discussion comes up, you, your suggestion might be to put some of that money back into the surplus fund. I don't see how you can't, Jim. Right. Unless you want to dismiss the project. You know, I, I you have to keep money. You have to backfill some of that. I can tell you, you know, the way we're at 150 to 200,000 probably I don't feel comfortable with that today. So I think that if you are eyeing that project, I think you have to eye, you know, the at, at a minimum, the amount that you have in, in surplus today, you know, given some extra coming down the pipe. Now that's not to say, you know, again, uh, you know, the project, you know, who knows, you know, they're talking recession. So, you know, maybe a recession falls out of the sky in November and, you know, the project comes under budget, you know, and you don't need this. Well, then, you know, it is what it is. But I think that to your point, these are projects that have been in the pipeline forever. So, you know, I would question to the board, why are we getting out in front of ourselves with five different projects that may be great when we can't even finish the projects that we've got today. So I think that to your point, I think that the select board shouldn't get out in front of themselves 
we do need to take one step at a time. This is step one. I think that you very much need to, whatever the priority list is that the committee comes out, and I'm not taking away any of the good work that the committee is doing, but I think that, you know, step two needs to be, okay, you know, just like your home finances, all right, I just bought, you know, the fancy golf clubs, you know, I need to remember that I got, you know, rent coming up or something like that. So if we take this to Duclay Hill, and it'll be over two years, we're only going to take 60 to $72,000 this year, you know, out of the surplus, we don't need the extra until next year, who knows what next year is going to bring as far as the asphalt, you know, the liquid asphalt goes. That's a stupid question. But I, but I think that, are we talking about my, my loose notes? But I think that uh, this is step one. I think that you need to understand that there is a very important step two to consider um, down the, the road. And I think that, you know, um, I wouldn't get, you know, I guess I, again, I would, you know, take it one step at a time. And whatever projects come down the pipe, just know that you need, we have now taken from that cushion that we right. had. And but this work has to be done, right? Am I right? But it's it's necessary. So, but, I, um, I personally would say it is, you know, otherwise we're paying for we've been driving on the darn you know, thing for and ball joints and you know <coughs> damage to well to your point, I would say you can almost use all your article money on the paving that absolutely needs to be done. I would take that article. So, so my brain is like you know, if you have type industries, you get equipment on the ground for one project, why not both? Knock them both out now. Let's do a whole thing, get it done, use your circles, money to cover it, and then we'll worry about the back later on when we decide how to do it. Because we're making this decision now, I'm not sure that they're going to pull up and go over to Clay Hill, which brings us to the second thing. And I'm not 100% tied to it, but I brought it up the last meeting, and I think it's important for the, the board to consider it. And I get the $14,000 difference, particularly now when we're eating into a surplus to do it. But this would be the fifth year in a row if we award it to Pike, uh, that Pike gets it, um, okay? Blacktop probably may not ever be Pike in pricing. However, if we don't um, entertain Blacktop, um, they may become a non, you know, they may say, all right, we're done bidding on Heartland, we never get Heartland. Uh, the second part of this is, is then on multiple, well, two to three occasions that Pike can't get to us by April, uh, I'm sorry, October 15th, um, or even April, October 30th for that matter. But usually when it gets to be about October 15th, we start to get a little cranky. They couldn't get to us last October. Um, I understand everybody had a lot more work than they anticipated, a shortage in workers and the weather was, you know, disastrous, but, you know, it's not the first time. Um, also, we had to wait a fairly decent amount of time to Pike to get us this estimate uh, and Blacktop was fairly um, prompt. Um, if it's not this year, um, next year is a whole lot more and a big, bigger differential, but um, I think it is time to entertain Blacktop as um, a possible bidder uh, and throw them a bone and see if they can get this done by the end of the season, see if they're a little bit more, um, uh, you know, capable of getting to us. Um, Pike, again, does a lot of volume. Um, they take care of the state first, and then they come around to municipalities. Um, I get it, it's 14,000. You know, this is not my mountain to die on, but I think that from a competitive point of view, I think that we need to consider Blacktop. Um, for historic, just for history, before I came, they didn't really go out for bid. They just went back and forth. They did pipe one year and blacktop the next because they're both landowners in Heartland. So we just kind of, you know, went back and forth. When I got here, we went out to bid um, continuously and pipe has continuously got it. Um, 
you know, at some point um, to keep people's feet to the fire, um, I think the board should consider black cotton competitively as well as pike. Yeah, add a year to do it, but next year, <coughs> next year is not any better. Why is it a bad year this year? What's that? Why is it a bad year this year? Uh, just because you know you're dipping into a reserve account, so instead of dipping in fifty, you know, fifty-four thousand, you're dipping in, you know, seventy-three. Um, you know, it just puts us that much more. But I think I'm just looking at this as you know more of a long-term. Um, you so, know, vendor. So my, my suggestion here is, if you want to do both, if you want to do black talk, I would suggest section one on pike and black talk now. Next year, I don't think your prices are going down. Or I think your prices are going up. There's still infrastructure money that the federal government is figuring out how to roll out. There's going to be another deluge of cash coming to you know, that's going to compete for all these resources. So if you want to get any work done, you got to do it as soon as you can. Yeah, we actually thought, for some degree, I thought maybe in that period right now, where there's, there's money that the state are utilizing for creating jobs. Um, I, th I think if I, for my own benefit, there are a number of things on the table. Um, so let me make sure I'm grasping on that point. Um, we have two bids for whatever reason. Pike gave us the full uh, section one, section two of, of Clay Hill Road, but top is top of one. Um, I have to believe that since only on the western side there's this, and the eastern side there's a piece of pieces of pavement now, so they're both talking about the identical spots. And one's not sort of not paving something in or, or not. I, have to, I don't see that anywhere in the small information here. Um, we talked about the O Bridge um, and that we have a high highway surplus fund of approximately 400,000. 450. 450. Um, and and uh, we all know that we have work ahead. Um, in June to receive uh, recommendations for how to spend the ARPA money that is coming from the advisory committee. Uh, uh, I concur with Dave, we could, um, we could pick one topic. We could spend it all right here in Gaming Hall. We could spend it all and still not have enough to the roads. Um, but uh, I, I think at this point, um, we need to not make any decisions about the ARPA money. But I do agree that uh, if we were to, we should replenish the surplus fund with the ARPA monies so that we are in the best position possible for whatever unfolds with the three quarters intersection. Um, I don't have an opinion about block top versus uh, pipe. 14,000 is. 14,000. Um, I'm not sure what that percentage is. I can't pick on it. So 5%. 5%. Um, I'll bet I'm guessing. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, it's interesting, Dave, that you mentioned that in years past, um, as a town, we would one year go with one vendor and then next year the other vendor. Um, as you pointed out, they're both property owners and in, in town. Um, so um, those are my thoughts, and I just would appreciate hearing what um, Mary, Mandy, Clyde, if you have any specific thoughts on that, and then let's make a decision about, uh, I assume those two items. You know, Moving forward, one vendor and second using the highway surplus to make up the difference. Dave, those would be two decisions you want to make. Um, yep. Yeah. Just to put you a little bit at ease, so if you look at the two bids um, or estimates, 
uh, and the reclaim and grade um, uh, Pike's got 13,885 square yards um, and uh, Black Cup's got 13,836. So it's pretty darn, this, 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 yeah. the estimates are pretty darn close. And Bill went out and walked it and they measured it both companies together, so. Yeah, and I'm not able to, to uh, I mean, I rely on Bill and Bill's expertise and your expertise to sort of know whether or not the mix PG 5828 is all <coughs> the te technical aspects of this are correct. Um, I have to believe it would be. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, the difference I see is that one has those aspects built in, the other one, it's not any of those. Okay, Mary, any thoughts? I think data points, um, we should take that into consideration in that Pike's got gotten a bid for how many years? Five, six? Plus four. Four, four years. Four, four, years. four to five. So <clears throat> how ambitious are they going to be with their next bid if they think they're going to get it? Because mm -hmm. they're not going to try to really be competitive. So just from that point of view, I think we should encourage the competition. Okay. Good points. So do you have any other thoughts? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And how about the surplus use of the surplus funds? Yeah, that's what you want to say. Also, Blacktop is more locally owned than Pike. And so. so why not get a bid for both sections from Blacktop? Oh, we did. Um, we, uh, th there was a, uh, just, their pricing on the ditching was just way out of whack. So we said, you know, what, what do you got going on here? And they went back out and took a look and we said, you know, at the moment we're truly interested in section one. So if you can get back to us with that, um, because this was like during the week. Uh, so they did. So I've got, I did originally get two estimates, you know, I got a section one and a section two from Blacktop, um, but um, by the time we asked for them to take a look at that, Bill and I pretty much were like, you know, we can't do both. And um, right now it looks like the, the, the Queechy Road side was, you know, most doable. Um, and then also getting feedback from you as far as, you know, what this is needs to be kind of a two year deal. Um, you know, we're going to need to dip into uh, surplus to do that based upon what we know today. Um, you know, things can change in seven months, but um, so we wanted to put those pieces into place. Um, that's why for tonight, we only have the, the section one part, or I'm sorry, to be apples to apples, section two of Pike um, is what Blacktop gave us. Okay. So you only want approval on section two, right? Exactly. Do, do, do folks think it's reasonable to come back and look at section one later and maybe get this thing rolling this year? Again, I think we're we're getting ahead of ourselves okay. to for the reason you brought up is uh, I think each of us tonight, if we were to take a poll, would have a different idea of how to spend the upper moves. But yeah, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying surplus money. You know, get the second project rolling. Oh, and figure see out what's see what's see that would be a little bit. Again, I tend to run conservative. You know, that would run about. That would put you about four hundred and forty thousand dollars over what we've got pegged for paving. Right. Um, you know, it's possible that. You know that I didn't want to get into it, but it's possible we have surplus from this year. It's possible we have a a deficit depending on when the grant money comes back on this paving and a couple other things. So we may not even know the true number until the audit comes out on what we're carrying over to next year. So I would, um, um, I'm feeling a little, a little bit more comfortable doing this in two years than trying to build it out in one year, unless you were going to sit here and tell me, yeah, we'll pull $500,000 out of ARPA today just to have ready. Then I would say, you know, let's go for both. Or to put it the other way, you know, again, we had this discussion like three, 
five select board meetings ago. It's kind of six and one half dozen the other. If you just want to spend 450 grand, you know, tonight of ARPA money to do both sections, which would be right. um, ideal. I think we, if we're real, we don't want to do that. Okay. So, so the then we're really. So then we're back to section yeah. two. But the question is, do you really take, do you take a surplus now and use it? Or do you wait for prices to go up? Because when the government gives away money, prices go up. Right? Um, and, the, and the infrastructure money is going to get given away eventually. I'm going to put it right back and say if you want to spend 500 grand of ARPA money today and keep a reserve amount for something that breaks tomorrow, because we could get a July 1st storm okay. and we're out 150 grand or we're out a Maysill culvert, which happened two years ago. So um, I would a, not I would not suck up that surplus. But you have a culvert reserve fund and you also have a bridge reserve. And you also have a general reserve, fund, uh, you know, a culvert know. reserve fund of 50 grand, you know, so in the other reserve fund that can only be used for voter approval. So, you know, no, I would say I'm not going to drain our, all our reserves unless if you really think, you know, prices are that cheap, then, you know, it was pull the ARPA money. You know, I, I would not leave yourself without. And, and I would not I leave yourself you with debating or against your ideas. I just want to understand the numbers. But it sounds like we have 450 of highway surplus. We've got 200 of culvert. That's 650. We've got another 50 of bridge. That's seven, right? And then we've got another 300 that was voted on for the general reserve fund. That's a million dollars. Each for a different thing. Each so, different so the the general fund deficit fund or the reserve fund, which is fund balance reserve fund, is only if we're going to run a deficit. Yeah. And it's primarily for the you know general fund. It can be used for the highway fund, right? But again, you know, you built that up, you've got like what 5% in there and you want to try and get 15%. So why go ahead and you know blow it all today? No, I, I, I think agree. that you know again, you know, I don't want to go more than two years. But, but you know, keep the money in there we're sitting on a million. because it will happen. We're sitting on a million. We'll get another million in ARPA, and then we'll get infrastructure funds, but we don't know how much it would be. It could be a dollar, it could be another amount. It's not coming to the town, Jim. The, the infrastructure money is not coming directly to the town. We, it looks as though we're going to get some infrastructure money from Mill Street. Yeah. You want to see how fast this can go? July 1st rains a couple of years ago, four years ago, cost Norwich a million and a half to two million dollars worth of damage that they're still they're doing a project today sure. so you know again if i would recommend you keep your reserves where they are you know again unless you're going to backfill that because you know again you know we're talking about hurricane irene you still have a three corners intersection project that may go 500 grand over where is that going to come from right. it can't come from a culvert uh, reserve fund. It's not a culvert. It can't come from a bridge fund. It can't come from the, the general fund fund balance. So where would that come from if you're going to go over if you have a storm or anything like that? So, you know, it's nice to say, yeah, we're sitting on a million bucks, but it's you're sitting on a hundred grand if the culvert goes. You're sitting on 50 grand if the bridge goes. If you happen to run a deficit, then you can access that deficit reserve fund. It's not there for, you know, if Janeville Road washes out again, like it did two years ago. Okay. Okay. Dave, I, I um, as you and Bill consider the two sections, the east section and the west section, um, um, the east section, the Route 5 endpoint. Um, has that nasty downhill that's falling away. That's, I'm assuming that's why the, the cost is, is significantly better. Can, can we wait a year to have, you, you basically, the two of you made a decision about which east or west to do. Um, was it primarily a financial one or was it the feeling that they're both needy and we'll just get to the next one next year. 
They're both equally as bad. Okay, that's why I needed to know. I would think that the Route 5 side sort of costs more because you do have that lovely thing that is called Clay Hill that keeps sloughing off. Yeah. It really should be done. It is sliding. Yeah. It is sliding. <laughs> Has been for a long time. A long time. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and that house below it probably doesn't do much uh, in the way of showing it the bank. Yeah. But I assume that would, that would have to be shored up before you do a major paving in a way, right? Or should be, let's put that way. <clears throat> We're not 100% sure, but we think because what we've done in the past is just kind of shimming all the way that yeah. you've got just layers of slop. Yeah. And that it's kind of, you know, the slop is kind of, you know, gravity is pulling it along with some, some water problems there. So, um, Reclaiming it or doing some ditching on on the uphill right side um, would, would be beneficial to that segment. Okay. Um, any other discussion? So. Would you like two motions? It's up to you guys. Two would be probably cleaner. Okay. And I ask for a motion to use the bid from Blacktop to pay the Quichi Road and of Playbo Road. I'll make a motion. To go with the black cluster bid, let's refer to the section two of Clay Hill Road. Um, is there a second? I'll take that. Okay. All in favor of that motion, say aye. 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 Yes. Okay. So now I need a motion to. Use the highway surplus funds to make up the difference in the paving budget to complete the Clay Hill Richie Road and project. Someone can be a better what yeah, <laughs> what's Do we what? have a total amount? Yeah, what's the number? Yeah. Okay, very moving from right. the surplus to the do we know the amount? Um, I believe uh, it's about 273, should be about 713 or 14. I'm sorry, 70. So if it's 273, I don't have the total. Oh, I'm sorry, I'll put the page here. I, had, I still don't have the total. Did you I, have, I had 273, 602. So it's 73,602 would be the overage over the 200,000. So I could, I could simplify that. Do we authorize the transfer from the highway surplus? You actually don't need to transfer anything. It's just going to be an automatic. Okay. So, we have, so you're just authorizing to utilize, to allow surplus funds to be used to offset the overage. Um, so, so I'd, I'd like to make a motion to authorize the use of highway surplus funds to cover any budget deficit in the blacktop bid up to a maximum of $75,000. I second it. All in favor of that motion say aye. 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 Jimmy, you're going to have to write that down. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was really long. Okay. You get two people on it with their hands up. Oh, I'm sorry, I want you to finish the vote first. Mm -hmm. I, I think we did. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. 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 
We had two people, Andrea Andros, Ambrose, and John Bruno. Who do you want to hear from first? Andrea? Uh, yeah, alphabetically, Andrea, sure. All right, Andrea. Andrea, are you there? Yes, can you hear me? Yes. That's a yes, you can hear me? Yes. Okay, very good. Uh, I just wanted to make a comment that it's my understanding, actually, this is Andrea Ambrose, resident of Heartland, property owner and therefore taxpayer. It's my understanding that the select board appointed an ARPA committee of Heartland residents who are spending a great deal of their volunteer time to research and make recommendations of how the town should utilize the funds coming to the town of Heartland. I would really, really like to ask the select board to not continue to allow, and I'm sorry, Dave, but the town manager, a non-resident, to use his position at the select board meetings to push his, I would call it, ARPA agenda. I think I it's- agree, uh, please, uh, I, I don't need the political uh, side notes there. Uh, okay. You are absolutely correct. The ARPA advisory committee has been charged to look at the 56 public items that were mentioned during the two public meetings. That committee yeah. has been working um, a lot of hours and in fact is now meeting weekly to try to meet the up, upcoming deadline. If you were to look at those projects, there's an awful lot of projects in there that are road related to start with. But I don't, I feel your comments are just inappropriate. Um, we, I, if you listen to our conversation before, we are not choosing to spend ARPA monies at this time. We will during June. And um, I'll finish with that. Okay. Um, I just like to finish and say that. I, I do think it's premature to bring up any kind of ARPA discussion at this point in time until the committee has presented their recommendations. And then certainly it, it may all go towards roads. And I'm not saying that it should or shouldn't. I just know and value the amount of time and respect the amount of time that the volunteer committee is putting into this and have a great deal of criteria that they, I, I believe, are using to then make their final recommendations. Okay. Uh, anything else, Andrea? No, that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Phil, sure. I just want to peacefully make a comment yes. that the conversation revolves around we're taking money that the select board for two years now has understood, you know, to be there and available in case this three corners intersection project went over budget. Mm -hmm. We are now taking money from that to leaving the overage for a cushion for that three corners intersection project in in, in limbo. Mm -hmm. And the, the Jim, I'm not trying to pick on you, but the culvert reserve fund isn't going to cover it. You know, the bridge fund isn't going to cover it, and it's really not a deficit related, you know, general fund. So I would not be doing my job with the select board if I did not raise that you have got a 10 year project coming down the pike that is running over budget. If I did not make the board aware that we're now pulling money from that, leaving you with questionable amounts, and where are you going to get that, then I wouldn't be doing what you pay me for mm -hmm. um, at the end of the day. So I think it's important that, you know, I'm bringing that up as ARPA funds, but if someone wants to magically tell me, you know, where else, if that project comes in over budget, you would like to pull that money from, you know, now is the time we've got five months to discuss it. Um, but certainly if I'm not making the board aware of that, then, you know, we're, we're we're not doing what we should be doing. But you know, and I, I sat in with every ARPA committee, and I, I respect what they're doing. But 
again, Jim, one step at a time, and we just took one step. There's more steps to come, um, you know, in the next six months. I think that'll be part of this discussion. Okay, thank you. Uh, anything else, Uh This is John Bruno. Uh, yes, John. Um, a, a couple of things. I don't recall in the warning that approved the three hundred and fifty or four hundred thousand dollar highway reserve fund that was tagged for the three corners intersection. That it was just monies that were approved for the highway reserve fund to have as a surplus. So now to say that this all amount of money is allocated or should be allocated to the Three Corners project certainly was not transparent to the voters when that warning was put to the voters. Um, and I guess another, just a general question is on the Three Corners, uh, at the bid opening, I guess it was somewhere around $1,450,000 for the Three Corners project. And with all the grant money and um, other monies that were provided by the state and by the feds, plus what was approved by the town, I thought was closer to maybe uh, $2 million. So where is the $500,000 uh, overage in the, um, in the three corners bid? I'll tackle one at a time. John, um, you and I got to sit and talk reserve funds at some point. So what went on the, the warning um, at this last town meeting is not, and, and, and we discussed this in, in open select board meetings, is not the $450,000 that we're talking about presently. The highway reserve fund is not, or, or let me put it another way, it's not even a reserve fund, it's a fund balance, it's equity. It's you know built up over several years. Um, there was 350,000 when I arrived. Um, it's $450,000 now. Uh, a lot of that is because we were lucky enough to get grant money to offset um, such things as the Martinsville road sinkhole that we had and um, you know Clay Hill, we had, half the road washed out two summers ago um, that would have drained that. And we were lucky enough to get grant money for that. So um, we've actually been able to add to this a little bit. Um, I'm sorry, but it's not a reserve fund. It's money that's available to spend. It is, it is not a reserve fund. It is strictly in the highway fund. And the highway fund has different statutory obligations. And, and when you have a surplus or a running fund balance, what it is. So this is, it's, this is fund, surplus is fund balance. It's not a reserve account. It's, it's hanging in our equity. And um, with the highway uh, department, and because we get a chunk of change from the state of Vermont um, to help offset expenses in the highway funds, um, that can be rolled over and used for highway expenses. Um, don't need to go to the voters, don't need to, you know, can be rolled over and used for um, highway related expenditures. The general fund that you voted on um, at town meeting, uh, the general fund is different. And if you have a significant enough overage, um, you know, you need to go to the voters and ask what you'd like to do with that. And we set up a reserve fund, which is essentially works the same exact way as the highway fund balance. It just basically um, parks the fund balance in a reserve account, which can be used in case there's a deficit. Um, and again, uh, governmental accounting practice standards recommend a 15% um, you know, reserve account we put in like 5%, we put in a couple hundred dollars. Two different buckets of money. Um, two different reasons why it's there. Um, and again, um, you know, we kind of 
have cultivated this. Um, fortunately, again, we didn't have to expend it. We could have, or maybe needed to when Martinsville and Clayville went. Um, you know, we haven't seen the issues that we're seeing today with the asphalt pricing, which is, you know, if we didn't have the three corners intersection, we would be digging into this, no questions asked. But we've also kind of had an eye on it in case there has been an overage in the three corners intersection project. And, you know, it looks as though there may be. So, um, you know, we're pulling from that. And again, I'm letting the board know that um, that is leaving you vulnerable on the three corners intersection project. The second one, John, I, I'd have to show you uh, budgetary stuff. So essentially, John, um, in that budget that uh, incorporated the bond vote, there was multiple things in there. There is the contracting services, um, you know, of the contractor. There is the site inspection. There is a contingency. Um, there is, um, you know, some additional en uh, design engineering, um, you know, for certain things. There is money in there for um, uh, project manager um, out of two rivers, you know, that gave us a total amount. Uh, the bid amount was only the contractor. It wasn't the inspection services, wasn't the contingency, wasn't anything else, just the contractor. So, so the so the five hundred thousand dollars or so overage is the other services other than just the bid of the of the construction. Yeah. So the one point five. Well, I'll just round up. So the one point five. Um, you know, we would have expected you know everything to come in at um, you know, including inspection services, including you know the additional design engineering that we had factored in project management, you know, whatever other, you know, the, the contingency, you know, was more or closer to 1.5. Um, the bid that we got was just strictly the contractor. So let's just say we were expecting a million bucks for the contractor and then money for contingency, money for inspection services and money for the other stuff. Um, instead of being a million, the contractor came in at 1.5. So he is actually more than 50% over. And I'll get into that under, under the manager's notes. Manager's notes. The manager's update. Um, but so does that, do you understand that part of the job? No, I do. Um, okay. will, will, will you be coming back to the voters for the additional monies that are required for the project? Again, we talked about that a couple of select board meetings ago. Um, there are various options, um, you know, one being ARPA, uh, you know, as to um, wouldn't need voter approval. Okay. It, it would be it, sometimes in the, in the agendas, um, it would be interesting to see in the um, town manager's report to the board if there could be some items in there of what is going to be discussed um, so that um, people that are interested could, could go to that meeting and not necessarily, not that I don't enjoy going to all the select board meetings, but uh, uh, it, would, it would help. But thank you. Thank you, John. Okay, any other hands up? No, I don't have any. Okay. Um, I think we finished Katie Biggs. That one went longer than the, uh, than the rules and procedures. Huh? No. You did that one. Right? Okay. Um, the next step is the Merrick Campbell Fund Policy. We, we, Mary, uh, last meeting, uh, we discussed the pros and cons of proposal one and proposal two. We had a unique situation in that we actually had a request for funds. 
at the last meeting. Um, and what we, is that unique? Um, it was a good opportunity uh, oh, okay. because it pr provided us a chance to say, let's use proposal two to go into an executive session and um, discuss the request and then come back out. Um, so uh, it was um, tabled last time until today because folks thought that you should be present for deciding on either one of the strategies. So without putting you on the spot, do you have a preference? Two. Two. Okay. Oh, really? <laughs> uh, wait, are you sure you don't want to <laughs> that? No, I think she's hungry. Um, My dogs are hungry. Yeah. 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 Um, I thought proposal two did work last time and it gave us the best of all worlds. Um, uh, we didn't spend too much time in executive session. Um, it didn't necessarily save the town manager any time. So all the preliminary work would have to be done either for proposal one or proposal two. Uh, um, so is there any discussion before I ask for a motion about which proposal to, to use? We're okay. split last time. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 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 I felt confident that we've done uh, due diligence. Mm -hmm. And uh, Parties involved would suffer no embarrassment and uh, because nothing was brought out. Good points, Clyde. Yes, I agree. I, I'm quite happy with the proposal, too. It seems very reasonable. Uh, are we missing anything, Dave? Is there, um, I, as far as one or the other, yeah. Um, I I got nothing to add at this point, other than at some point, um, I think the board just may want to Relinquish. consider, um, no pun intended, but the merits of um, you know getting into the details of uh, the personal discussions. Um, you know. And, you know, we don't have the poor farms anymore. Didn't have town manager way back when. Um, I, I don't know what the the alternative structure looks like. You know, Clyde mentioned West Windsor. Um, you don't get away from the open meeting law under the separate committee or three person committee. You still have a open meeting law that you have to contend with um, and work around. But I think that. Um, we have three new select board members. When we have the Hartman Cares group meeting, they spent a lot of time discussing um, with, um, God, what was her name? From Alan Scutney. Prevention. Melanie. Melanie. Um, Forget her last name. <clears throat> alternatives to this, what we do today. Um, we did take the step of finding, um, you know, some options for uh, case management. But, you know, again, we still, me as a group and kind of discuss these things. This is not at the top of my priority list, but again, at some point, you guys may want to think about the merits of it. I really noted about the relevance of our work here, but it is important work. Um, can I ask for a motion to uh, proceed with proposal two? I'd like to, I'll make a motion because I already wrote it down to <laughs> adopt proposal number two for the Merrick Campbell funds policy. I'll second. Uh, all in favor of say aye. 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 It's unanimous. We saved some time. Thank you. And Jim, thank you for your light work with, with this. And I'm making a note to get the case management doc document to that the select board kind of voted on to 
to Jim Clyde and to Amanda. Thank you. Hey, if you are on for managers, okay. Uh, so I'm going to stick to kind of, we have some key topics, so to move things along. Um, so I am going to pick up with the three corners intersection projects. Um, and again, a lot of this information um, going away, leaning into a select board meeting is just kind of tough um, to pull it together. So this was, um, so the last time I came to speak to the board, um, the, the proper for the whole <clears throat> um, review of the bid um, by Willie's had not been done yet. So uh, I gave you kind of an overview. Um, you know, however, the bid was reviewed by our design engineer. Um, and because we do have uh, federal and state partners in this, um, you know, the bid needs to abide by certain rules uh, as well. Um, those are laid out in the bid document that we send out to the contractors when they bid. Uh, and so in reviewing the bid from Willie's, um, he, you know, on one of, so there's three things that uh, VHB kind of highlighted. Um, it's not on the first page, but there's a fourth. Um, they left one uh, line item um, basically empty. They didn't have an amount for it, which essentially um, almost immediately rejects that particular bid. Uh, there was a discrepancy in the total amount. Uh, in, in a couple of cases, it was a fair amount. Um, you know that there was a discrepancy, so they, they did the math wrong. Uh, so the, the total on the line item was um, lower than it should have been if they had done the math correctly. Uh, and lastly, uh, they are not, they needed to be a pre-qualified contractor. Uh, they were not on the state, the VTRANS pre-qualified list, um, which also disqualifies them uh, as well. So uh, Willie's made an argument that they were on that list um, at the end of the day, the person overseeing that list um, is who we need to go by. Uh, he said that they weren't on the list. So uh, there was a loan bid, but if there were multiple bids, we would have had to reject Willie's uh, outright. So, um, you know, we could, you know, have taken this particular bid. Um, in the last page, there's the recommendation, um, as I spoke about uh, prior, about going out and back out in January, uh, which is what we intend to do. Um, again, along with this, we also, um, project manager Rita did call around to some of the people that did not submit bids. Uh, they basically said that they were had, had enough work um, and um, decided not to fill it out and that um, January would be a better time and more available to submit a bid at that point in time. Uh, so uh, I wanted the, the board to essentially see VHB's uh, response to basically the bid analysis. Um, I'll just reiterate that we do plan on going out in January um, once the season gets done and turn, kind of turn the corner on the new season. Uh, Oh, sorry, procedural yeah. question is are you not able like are you not able to go up before January or what's the like, what's the January date? The feedback that we've gotten and the mutual agreement between us is is that um, that is when um, companies are going to be looking to you know start the process and again it's early enough in the process to line up work for the next summer. Um, you know, at the moment, uh, the feedback that they've got is they're out and they're busy. And, you know, that's what they're doing at the moment. Right. We're also, you know, the farther out it is, uh, the least likely they are to, you know, submit a decent bid because um, right. once they go past a 30 day um, period, um, they're pretty well locked into that. 
So, you know, if they're bidding us something in November, and by December, they got to hold that price all the way till May. You know, January to February is, you know, who knows what's going to happen, you know, next summer, but just, you know, a couple months difference and um, it's kind of where we're at. The other difference here is um, last time I did say, you know, I kind of said, you know, we got talking about GPI and I said, this is kind of um, a moot point because of where we were with um, Willie's. <clears throat> we do plan on moving forward with GPI, who's an inspection services engineer. They're going to hold their price. Um, that will lock us in um, for uh, an engineer. However, if the project disintegrates, um, you know, we're not bound to having an inspection engineer sit out on a front lawn and just look at traffic go by when we have a cam. Uh, we can dissolve their contract if the if the actual project dissolves itself. So um, our <clears throat> um, enthusiasm with GPI hasn't waned. Um, this just gives us and them um, knowledge that um, they do have a project coming down the pike, even though there is questions kind of across the state as to what's going to transpire over the next 10 to 12 months. Um, but um, they seem to be excited about doing the project and we seem pretty excited to have that. So um, that we will continue on. Um, and that's kind of it on that front. Um, prior to the last meeting, I'll just, um, for transparency, Phil did have a question on the, the project um, on the mileage. It was not a bulk rate on the mileage, it was per mile. <clears throat> it was actually a fairly high number, 7,000, I think, for mileage for guiding you know, for folks to kind of go back and forth um, at the end of the day, two, three people. Uh, however, uh, the overall bid itself um, was uh, lower than estimated. Um, so I think that overall, again, we're happy with the price, even though that particular line item kind of sticks out. Um, it's not 100% sure we'll have that gentleman, Dell was his name. Um, things may change, but they need to submit some official paperwork if they do change it. Mm -hmm. um, um, but again, we're pretty happy with the firm overall. Um, the GPI is an approved state engineer reviewer um, yeah so this is inspection um, services yeah i'm sorry go ahead so if their personnel change that really shouldn't matter it's the firm that's that's approved not fred or joe or mary or sue uh, uh so exactly so um they the firm is approved uh however um, there was a significant amount of conversation revolving around the individual that they put forth and, and making sure that we were comfortable with that individual. Um, um, there is one person closer to Hartford that we kind of liked. Um, unfortunately, he had been pulled to another project, mm -hmm. but we were at the end of the day satisfied with this person. Okay. If they were to need to submit another person, um, other than who they put forth, then that conversation will have to be made. But over, you know, again, we're fairly happy with the firm sure. and those above, whoever that person would be on the ground here. So is there, there's no real action for us here. It's really more of the budget is there and they're agreeing to stick to it for, for a period of time. <clears throat> um, we're talking, um, which is good, which is good. So this comes back to, you know, comment I made to Jim a while back. This is, you know, we, this is almost a topic of conversation. Um, when it isn't, it's just there's a real lull going on. We may go into that lull um, over the course after tonight um, until we get towards the holidays. But again, um, to beat that drum, there are 
financial decisions to be made um, for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah I agree. Um, and there'll be many rich discussions on the use of the ARPA. Um, we'll also know for sure about some of the conversation that's happened tonight about the additional state monies, are they going to be on the state roads and so on with any of that trickle down. So uh, keep your ears and eyes open. I think we don't really know what's going to unfold. So the next one is one that just doesn't seem to want to go away. Um, Town Highway 8. Um, I have had a couple of phone calls to Town Highway 8 for a couple of various issues. Um, so Town Manager's Office administratively is still involved with Town Highway 8, whether we want to be or not. Um, however, um, on a week ago Friday, uh, I think, um, uh, Roger Trotter did send me an email um, asking, you know, for town's assistance uh, in a group of residents upgrading town highway eight. Um, that is not an easy task. Um, it's not an easy ask, um, and it's not something that the town um, should take lightly. There's a fair amount of liability involved. Um, it is a town right of way. It is a town road. Um, for our standards to be met, um, and you know those standards um, need to be upheld. And you know, at the end of the day, it's you know not up to us to you know the standards are out there. Um, we can put them out there, but it's up to you know the people to you know abide by those standards and bring that up to um, particular you know standard. I did overuse the word, but um, I understand what's going on here. So there are people who live there or near there or are interested to have high energy that want to pay themselves to upgrade upgrade the, that town. So, so it's a little unclear as to um, the extent of the upgrade that they would like to make. So if the upgrade was simply to make it a horse trail, you know, that's not quite such a big deal. If you want to upgrade it to be, you know, anything drivable, or if you want to make it anything, you know, that you know, is going to be of substance. You know, you need to have a base, you know, you need to have ditching, you need to have, you know. Wait a minute, this is a section, the class four section? Are we talking about? It is, yes. Well, that's not in the town's interest to upgrade that, because then we would have to maintain it. Is it a drivable section or no. is it a no, it's not. No. So the drivable section where people's driveways are is not an issue. Right. This is a class four section. Okay. Well, I mean, even the drivable well, the part of the driveway is considered huh? class four. That's the part of the So there's a lot of, um, you know, so let me put it into words. I think any everybody should be able to understand. So the state, so in order to do the work at the three corners intersection, you need to get what's called an 1111 permit. You need to get permission from the state to actually do the yeah, work. Already lost me. I think you need different words. <laughs> the, uh, we were not getting very far in getting that permit. There was very little trust on behalf of the state that the town was going to be able to do the work um, or even, you know, at the end of the day. It wasn't until the state themselves got involved in, in via to grants uh, in federal highway in that there was oversight by the state in a cooperation with the inspection engineer and actually you know contractor themselves because they also have a voice in this was there a level of comfort that this project was going to be done to the level that it should be um, in speaking with the town lawyer 
the town very much has that same interest of making sure that anything done in the town right away is done to a very high standard. In addition to that, anybody doing that work would need to carry full insurance, liability insurance. You know, if they're putting down material, if they're driving a bulldozer, backhoe, whatever it is, whoever's doing that work needs to have insurance and hold, you know, basically make the town an additional insurer. So uh, I know Roger's on here tonight, but, um, you know, this, I'm, I would just say that it would be an uphill climb to have, you know, again, it depends on what they are looking to do with this. You know, if it's just going to be a nature trail, you know, that's not so hard. Um, if you're actually going to upgrade this, then um, it's just the general public looking to do that. That's kind of an uphill climb. Um, in addition to that, we have a class four policy waiting in the wings um, that kind of outlines a lot of this. Um, so I would expect to maybe see some movement on that policy um, probably sooner rather than later um, coming down uh, to you guys. Um, that's coming from the Conservation Commission, but it has been sent to uh, the town lawyer for his input on that as well. Um, it's just, um, you know, anybody really, you know, class four roads need significant amount of work. Um, you know, the, there's been experience in other towns where somebody has wanted to upgrade, you know, a decent amount of roadway on class four road. And again, um, you know, we don't particularly have an interest in doing that. Um, person living there may, but um, at the at this moment is the town that has the burden of, you know, responsibility for it. So it's just um, for all the complexities that we've had with this project, um, you would kind of want to turn that around and apply it to this particular situation as well. Not sure if that makes sense, but. Yes, it does. Um, so is there action or is this just information? It's just information. Just, so you, you keeping you up to date on info coming into my office and movement on certain things that are. Do you continue still to be posting <coughs> things that? And so, I, which I think is a miss, it's an abuse of your time, I would say, and, and unfair to the rest of the taxpayers of town that you are being forced to uh, mediate a conflict that grown adults should well be able to manage. Um, I, I think that's the source of this request. No, I don't think it's a source, but I think it's a tool that's being used to give an advantage to one of the parties. So, uh, but what I'm talking about separate, I don't like the fact that Dave is being uh, I mean, he's got a lot going on. This seems like spurious news in his life. Um, it comes to me, um, you know, and Bill, um, you know, ultimately, you know, it would go for final approval to the board, but um, I'll just say that there were some concerns back in the fall mm -hmm. and now that it's spring um we'll it it perked up and hopefully we're beyond that and we'll see where we go but um it is um there are severe liability issues and a lot to consider if someone were to want to maintain the you know maintain that right which is, um, you know, focus of us. And um, we'll see what transpires as it continues to dry up. Yeah. What are they going to, to do? It wasn't. Uh, my understanding is, is they're not 100% sure yet. They were, I think it's like a neighborhood thing, um, group of people of interest. Um, they were going to kind of, get some feedback from one another as to what 
they may want to do. Mm -hmm. um, so that's not 100% clear. Anything else to what's that? So, uh, the town plan, town plan update, which I've communicated to you folks. Um, so we had public input uh, at the last meeting. Um, Sean is um, is and has um, or is in the process of writing those comments down for you to um, have when time comes to discuss this. Uh, there are ways that we can go about this, but um, uh, what we are going to do, I see as being a efficient way to use the select board's time um, and our select board meetings time is that um, Sean is going to review with Kevin Guider from Two Rivers out of Gucci Regional Commission. Um, the 10 to 11 items that he indicated that need to be adjusted for us to get reasonable approval. And he is also going to provide some input on what he heard um, at the public hearing and comments that he heard. Um, Sean is a planner, he has a master's degree in this. Um, what he is going to do is simply write up some draft language. He's going to take the comments. He's going to write up some draft language for the board um, and turn around and present this to the board. And I emphasize it being draft. Um, what, what I think that that does is when you come back and you meet in public, um, which will be a publicly warned meeting, um, you've got something to review, you can say, no, we need to go this way, we need to go that way, um, whichever way you want to go with it. But it kind of gets you to a point of discussion um, and you know, you can, it will be in, the discussion needs to happen in a public session. Um, and I think that there are members of the community that are looking to be part of that discussion. But I think that by providing the board, um, Jim, I know you're pretty close to this already, um, you know, just having gone through some of the discussion and some of the chapters, you know, um, but I think a little bit for Clyde, maybe Bill and Mary, um, if Sean writes up kind of a, you know, this is a little bit of, you know, the background and this is the, you know, the comments that were made and therefore we have a draft you know, discussion. Again, I think that then you can hit the ground running when you come to a meeting, you have had a chance to kind of absorb that for a couple of days before the meeting. And then again, I emphasize you come into an open meeting and, you know, that discussion is going to happen at that public meeting, um, select board meeting, um, you know, again, you're going to have the planning commission there. If they want to be there, you're going to have um, the Haymans of the world that are going to be there. So can we just talk about Sean's role for a minute? Because yeah. I think, you know, there's four documents on it, right, that have a feedback in them, right? One was from Jen. Yep. And, and, but those are mostly, you know, um, suggestions around updating data, right? Like for the census numbers, things like that. Kind of makes sense. Yeah, I'm not sure it's, I, I think, you know, I understand it. I don't know if I need Sean to write something up about that. Um, what you do need one, is, what you do need is Sean to actually figure out what the number that, is the for 2022. That would be, be great. That would be phenomenal. And then put it um, into, or put together the written comments that need to go to Kevin so that so, he can so then Kevin's turn comments, it. You know, some, some of them may kind of fit that same mode. Some of them probably need discussion, you know, so, um, well, some, some of his language is in there, most of it's vague. So, of which Kevin's comments, most of, most of his comments, he had some specific language, and the rest of it was just kind of vague. So, yep. Um, so, vague statements, maybe that's somewhat helpful there as well. In terms of the feedback from, you know, the 
the town residents yeah. who were suggesting specific changes to the plan. I'm not sure Sean needs to write up anything around that. We have their feedback in writing. That I think is just a discussion. So I think that there was some broad discontent with what was written in the town plan. And I think that um, there is, uh, so whether it be a paragraph or more than that, uh, and it may very well be more than that because you had, um, you know, you had, I can't remember what it was, the occupation, uh, the home occupation. But again, those are changes you had forward by specific residents to say we want to make changes to the town plan. That had some broad discontent with the number and the specificity, specifics of it. Um, so that can be uh, addressed. Um, but it's a material yeah. change to the land use, right? So stuff like that, I think it would be in our best interest to have a joint meeting with the Planning Commission to talk through those types of issues, to get the background, right? And kind of make a decision in a public meeting about do we actually make a change to the plan or do we leave the plan as is because it's in the town's best interest. So my response would be that they can end up with a select board. It is now in the select board's hands. And um, for various reasons, um, you know, there is that handoff. And it's now, you know, the planning commission has had it. I got you know, no qualms with the planning commission, but it's now reached you and you've got that decision-making authority. When this comes back to a public session, the planning commission can provide that insight at, at that point in time. So well, when a, a, yeah. a public hearing or a public session to work through the changes or two different things. Right? Either one. Right. So, but we can have so when this right. so when this comes back to you right. and you've got the starting document, and again, this is in your in, in your hands now. Um and you can come back at an even field. So you've got the planning commission making their input. You have got people also making their input. Planning commission can provide to you at that point in time, any feedback or any, right. any comments that they have regarding why they've done that and, right. and where they would like that to go. So that's kind of a working meeting versus a public hearing. And you can, well, your working meeting is going to need to be public. Right. So right. Not the, it's not a public. So meeting. when this comes to you, okay. it can be a select board meeting. Right. Okay. You're going to have a document in front of you of which to work off of. Select board can have that conversation amongst yourselves. You can take public input at that point in time from the planning commission. They can provide any input that they want in, in, add their two cents, as can members of the public that may feel as though it needs to be changed. And you can listen to the planning commission and you can gravitate towards them, or you can listen to you know, the other folks. Um, but as a part of this conversation, you are going to have something that you can say, you know, at the end of the day, Jim, if you think it's too far off of what the planning commission, you know, originally had, you're free to state that during the select board meeting. Um, you know, while you're saying that, there's going to be a member of the, 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 the public that may think differently of you. And it, whenever that time comes, and Phil says, okay, you can speak, he may challenge you on that if he's allowed to speak. If Mandy, I have no idea where she lands on this, you know, says, you know, no way, Jim. I think that this, you know, you need to open up the rural area to, you know, anything, you know, including things with blinking lights and, and whatever, 200 rooms and, you know, I want a Marriott. Um, you know, the planning commission is, you know, after she has said that, and as you guys are having your conversation and whenever there is a period of time that Phil feels as though public input is warranted, 
planning commission can say, geez, guys, you know, the rural areas there, you know, is, is designated that way because we have the village centers. We want to try and limit, you know, strict development. We want to keep it residential. You know, that could happen. Um, but you're getting in, you're getting all input, um, you know, which is kind of where you're at at this point. And again, it's at the select board level. But, and, you know, ultimately, you know, ultimately you guys are making the decision at this point. I think that last part uh, is the most important piece that we all do realize and fully have to reckon with that importance of that is um, if I was asked to discuss the document today in light of some of the suggested changes from folks, I, I would not feel able to do that. Could I do that if I went home and really did my homework? I think so. Um, so I do see a benefit of having Kevin from Two Rivers and Sean create and um, have, to have, a, have a dialogue based on what has been presented, Kevin giving the input that he apparently has. And then we then have at least those two sessions that I think we're talking about, one, a select board meeting where we are openly talking about it ourselves. Uh, if folks want to make a public comment, that's possible. And then we still have to have a public meeting, right. you know, after that. So, so um, you know, fully realize that, you know, the planning commission has done an awful lot of work and I don't want to alienate them to sort of say, we're running away and leaving you out of it. I, I think we are providing, uh, an avenue for uh, that discussion to happen. Yeah, okay. yeah it, it felt like we're heading in the same direction, just with different paths. Yeah. There may also be a meeting in between those, you know, where, you know, that something is presented, you know, you guys discuss this, planning commission has a fair amount to say, Hospitality groups have a fair amount to say. You guys talk more. You're kind of like, okay, you know, where I really see this going, you're close, but let's go a little bit this way. Um, you know, where, you know, we need to send Sean away and say, okay, you know, let's edit this, you know, to resemble more of something. And he comes back, yet, you know, again, that final public hearing is going to be, you know, look, we're pretty well done with this. Um, and have the final hearing, but you know, that's essentially to approve, you know, you're looking to approve it at that point. Yeah. yeah. So there, there may be, you know, I'm not saying, you know, Sean's going to come back and say, you know, look, well, this is, you know, here we are and, and you guys are going to discuss it and this thing is going to be perfect. You know, I'm not really expecting that. But, you know, what I am expecting is that, you know, you get to a point that you can have a decent jump off point. Yeah. In a public conversation, I guess I would so just caution against doing too much work on land use, you know, and then presenting something with the other vote down versus just have the discussion come up with the right language. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I certainly would not want to have that public meeting and for the five of us to have five different opinions. Uh, I think we need to we need to have that worked out. We may change our minds after that public meeting, but that's, that's uh, I would want to have a presentation that we feel we're, we're fairly in sync with as close as that can be. I would add to that. So Clyde sent an email and, you know, I would stick to, you know, if it's just, you know, I think Bowers Road, you know, you know, that was the name of it, you know, back in 1920, but today it's called something else. If you've got name changes and stuff like that, I think you can go ahead and send those to us. Yeah. If it's more than that. No, basically why there's the, house, the housekeeping thing, yep. stuff changed and has been gone. If you're like, you know, you're looking at this and it's more than that, you know, you're like, okay, I've read you know, I'm, I'm prepared for this thing. I got Sean's info. I've got, you know, I'm sitting at home and I'm reading, you know, this through and through and I, okay, I get it. 
but I really don't like chapter three. And, you know, there's a couple paragraphs that you want to make comments on. I would wait until that public meeting, you know, that select board meeting where you're going to, you know, there's discussion, open discussion on it. And you can say, okay, you know, we had those public comments, but oh, by the way, I really don't like chapter, you know, 10, which you did to that or whatever it is. Um, so, so, just so that it stays transparent. So, so I think the last thing we're going to do before we let Mary go eat and walk her dogs is just figure out the timeline. Like, when are we going to have, you know, what meeting are we going to have and what day are we going to do? So I would like to say it shouldn't be any later than the first meeting in June, just in case the two-week turnaround period is just not enough. Um, my understanding is, is that some of this is fairly simplistic. Um, it shouldn't be all that much, but I don't want to promise, you know, next meeting and say, okay, Sean, just can't get there. Um, but I would, particularly because I don't truly know, because some of that was vague from Kevin, some of that, I don't know what the work effort is, but if it looks like that is a work effort, but we've got Simple, simple discussion on the Sean submit his draft of whatever it is, is <coughs> for our next meeting. We receive the draft, we go read it, do whatever we need to do with it. And then we have that June first meeting in June, we have a working session on it. Not entirely sure I can get the draft to you. I, I would think to get you an actual draft well, of all that's been just bear with me for a second, of all that's been discussed. So <clears throat> we may need to take it in two steps. So we may need to say, okay, you know, researching all of Jen's stuff and, you know, dotting the I's and crossing the T's on all of Kevin's stuff may be monotonous and time consuming. And that's going to take a little bit. As you said, I think that's probably secondary to this conversation. Although I'm a little curious on some of the details of where Two Rivers is going with some of those comments. But if push comes to shove and we want to shoot for that first meeting in June, and I would say, you know, let's focus on those hot button issues that came to us. Um, you know, the three really, you know, the, the, the lodging, the, the rentals, and um, perhaps um, summer sunny need. Um, you know, see if we can, if there's that, and then deal with some of the other stuff. I don't see a real need to write anything on that stuff. I mean, that's a discussion, and then the write up happens after the discussion, and you know, and consensus. So, I, I see a little bit, I see a little bit to that. Yeah, I, I let's agree. I know next meeting is pretty full. We're, we're going to have agenda items. Uh, Jim, you were throwing out agenda items before. I mean, uh, the first meeting in June is going to be here really quickly. It's, Which is our um, Um Let me just, so let me just say, we will try, I, I think that the first meeting in June is a safer meeting than to say we can turn around and have something for next meeting. Um, you know, if we've made some concrete steps forward, um, but it's not complete, you know, I can communicate with you and say, look, this is where we're at. And, you know, we want to move forward and we want to, you know, it'll take an X amount of time to do the other stuff. Sure. Um, so I'll, I'll, I feel more comfortable with the first meeting in June. I'm not sure I can turn around and get a draft by yeah, you know, those. next meeting. Two weeks is pretty short. And then just to get it to you prior to that meeting, it's like a ten day, it's like ten days from today, you know. So that's just, yeah. I think that's just way too tight. Yeah. You're right. So one, one last question: Do we have any hands up? Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Um, is that it, Dave, for the manager's update? It Not is. that it. I mean, that was an awful <laughs> lot. That it is. Um, um, there's been some side discussions um, that sometimes the manager's update uh, perhaps should be moved up in the agenda so we're all not brain dead and going to be coherent so that we actually can have a discussion about like we are 
with the topics tonight on that. Um, but I'm not suggesting we change anything. Is there any correspondence that we're aware of? Took care of that the, the manager's update, the correspondence for Roger. Roger, okay. Um, any other business? We have a motion to adjourn at 8.25. So moved. We can do second for that, right? All in favor? Thank you, everyone. And I hope we get the spring back. I I had like a gazillion emails today. So sure. I saw it. I mean, it's I'll. <coughs> Thank you.